Good morning. Thank you so much for staying with us right here on Women Radio WFM 91.7. It's five minutes after 10 on this amazing Tuesday morning, the 27th day in the month of February 2024. So how are you feeling today? We just have two more days to wrap up this month. I hope that the month has been good to you. You've been able to do a lot of things this month. You know, some of the things that you told yourself, you know what, I'm going to do it. And I hope you're able to do it. How far with your exercises? Are you still on it? I mean, you've started slowing down. <laughs> <laughs> For those who said this year like this, you'll be going to the gym. How far? She likes to continue to ask. I mean, I should just leave it like that. Anyway, it's all good. It just has to do with consistency. All right. No matter how little it is, try to do it every day. All right. So this is Women Radio WFM 91.7. And of course, this is Nigeria's first radio station for women and their families. You are welcome to the program Radio Doctor. Radio Doctor is a free health consultation program where real doctors advise real people. Radio Doctor is Nigeria's first specialized health program where medical doctors consult for free. And advice right here on Women Radio WFM 91.7. And this comes to you Mondays through Fridays from 10 a.m. All right, so yesterday we started off with children's health. Today, I promise that we're going to go through with women's health on Radio Doctor. Now, women's health on Radio Doctor is supported by ACT foundation my name is rose yusuf kaiser and our radio doctor for today is dr ede Dokolo osazua a consultant obstetrician and gynecologist at saint ice family hospital good morning dr osazua how are you today how are you feeling oh uh, good morning rose how are you today i'm doing well too thank you so much doctor so how's work been how are your patients and how is everything in general our patients are fine what's stressful well it's all good we thank god for you for having you around and you know all our gynecologists around because you all are doing a very fantastic job in taking care of us thank you so much doctor all right so um today dr sozua is uh we'll be consulting rather and advising on galactoria all right on uh, women's health today which is supported by acts foundation now the phone lines to call are 0 917 you can go ahead and send us a text or a whatsapp message to 07037 five six five three seven and of course our social media platforms are all there for you to follow and of course drop your questions on oh seven oh three one seven i mean on facebook instagram and x and of course youtube at wfm917.com all right so let's go ahead and of course talk on galactoria let's know what galactoria is all about let's um you know know what we should watch out for as women even as men you know you get to know more about this have good information about this all right so let's head on this is women's uh, radio women radio and of course this is the program radio doctor now dr Sosua, let's head on to it um what is galactoria let's start from that let's give an overview of very good foundation of what galactoria is and um, how this affects us as women thank you um Thank you very much for having me. My name is Dr. Yeah. Um, so, when we talk about Galactoria, now we have to understand the basic thing is that Galactoria means um, um, Mickey discharge from the breast. Let hmm. me make it very clear like that. Mickey discharge from the breast. So, before you go further, now the breast discharge a lot of things, okay? Hmm. And um, and it can happen at different ages, and it can happen on different signals on different uh, uh, conditions. Now, some children, some newborn baby, let me start from there, so that we can know, so that we will not say it's a pathology. Both male and females used to have some discharge from their breast. Okay? Uh. That's not what we are talking about here. Because of the exposure of the baby to high level of maternal hormone, estrogens, when, they, when yeah, in the room. So when they come out, they tend to have some scratch on the breast. Um, after about three to four, uh, three months, when all the emotions are wet, they are not going to try out. So we see that when children, in you know, later children or infants, then we're not going ahead to talk about sometimes during the course of pregnancy too, and uh, people also are making the start from their breast when they are pregnant, hmm. and when they are also deliver their breast, when they are making, must come out. 
That is quite different from what we are talking about today. Now, that is what we call lactation. Okay. Making the start that is associated with any form of pregnancy or postpartum period is called um, lactation. Lactation is different from the lactoria. The lactoria is making discharge in the absence of pregnancy. So with pregnancy, with pregnancy, there is, we call it what? Lactation. Without pregnancy, we call it what? Galactoria. So what we are addressing today is galactoria. But there are also some making discharge that come from the bread, like they are bloody, and those ones they have some pathological infection like breast cancer and poop. But that's not what we are dealing with today. We are dealing with galactoria, which is making the start on the breast that is not associated with the pregnancy. Okay? And it has the characteristic feature of the of the discharge. They contain mainly of neutrophils and eosinophils. So that is not doesn't contain more red blood cells as we see in people that have breast uh, cancer or people that have uh, issue and doesn't contain any form of cause. So it's clear. Making discharge from the breast that is not associated with pregnancy. I would say that um, almost about 20% of women tend to have this one called uh, making discharge of the breast that is not associated with pregnancy, which we refer to as galactoria. So, now why is it important that we must understand that galactoria or no galactoria? Because we have attribute galactoria to galactoria is actually a symptom, it's not. A disease condition. So if somebody have Mickey discharge from his breast, mm. you have to go and look for what is likely good causing a Mickey discharge on the breast. So symptoms doesn't mean that oh they have to go and find out. And I said that twenty percent of people get to have Mickey discharge from the breast and the cause is kind of physiological or pathological. So when we say physiological we don't even know there's no it's just like normal body function. Then okay? and people who wear very tight bra that we have very tight back tend to have some unnecessary stress from the breast. Um, people also wear tight backs with their we also have what we call personal persistent nipple stimulation. They tend mm -hmm. to have persistent nipple stimulation. Um, they tend to have big discharge from their breast too. Uh, people too who also who because of sexual intercourse um, their boyfriend or their husband are being aggressive with their breast. So this patient tends to also present with uh, Mickey discharge. Those are basic physiological things. I will let an call here and I will stay so that you can ask the questions and okay. continue our conversation. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Sozwa. This is Women Radio WFM 91.7, and this is, of course, the program Radio Doctor, your free health consultation program where real doctors advise real people. My name is Rose Yusuf Kaiser, and uh, today in the house we have uh, Dr. Ete. Uh, Dr. Law Osazua, a consultant obstetrician and gynecologist at St. Ives Family Hospital, and today he's consulting and advising on galactoria. And uh, he's just giving us a basic foundation of what galactoria is. This is 30 minutes after f uh, 10, I beg your pardon, and uh, I hope that you are getting more information on this and you're following up on the conversations too. All right, so do want to send me a text or a WhatsApp message on 0703 175 uh, call us on 07000 The doctor is here to attend to your questions, uh, your concerns, and of course, um, anything that comes to mind as regards Galactoria this morning on the program Radio Doctor. All right, Dr. Zuzua, thank you very much for giving us an overview of what Galactoria is. Now, does that mean that even men too could uh, could um, come up with this, or is just for, or is just women? Uh, yes, men can also have some people make it start. But for me, you have to inquire and investigate for that. Mm. But it's really rare. So in both men are feeling that are affected. Are affected. And that's something of the theoretical aspect of my system. It's just in the post stimulation and um, aggressive breast massage with social intercourse and go mm. and cause and calatura. So men can also be affected. Okay. But most of the time, men will never present. Okay. It's the women that will come to the hospital. Okay. All right, so thank you very much for that. Now, um, let's go to the common causes of galactoria um, and how this uh, probably differs for, uh, you know, for men and women. Do we, is it the same things that, you know, uh, causes this or there are different, you know, uh, factors that actually bring about galactoria in, you know, the woman's body and both for men too? Okay, well, thank you very much. So looking at it, uh we have to understand the pathophysiology of galactoria first. Let's look at it. Okay. Now, 
Now, what is happening is that there is an hormone that is produced in the brain. Hmm. Okay? Now, this hormone that is produced in the brain, okay, at or what we call the pituitary glands. Now, this hormone is called prolactin that is at the pituitary gland. So, when the pituitary gland is stimulated, so there's production of what we call an hormone which is called prolactin. Okay? Sometimes people say that are prolactin. Now, that prolactin now begin to, there are two hormones that causes uh, lactation. One is oxytocin, the other one is uh, prolactin. Now, the oxytocin causes like ejection reflexes, that's the compression of the breast. Why the prolactin basically causes what we call secretion. So, when this prolactin are activated in the anterior pituitary gland, in the pituitary gland, so they will not act on the breast meat to produce milk. So this milk will not begin to come out of the breast. So basically, to any part of anything that will increase prolactin in the body will definitely increase breast milk, uh, will definitely increase uh, galactoria. So we want that one at the back of our mind. So how would that go to our job? What are the things that are likely going to cause prolactin? So that any, I said, anything that will increase prolactin will increase milk production. But I said, then we cannot categorize it as there are some physiological things that we cannot just control that happens to us, OK? Mm. And first of all, to are people that wear very firm bra. It's physiological, you may not know. The constant irritation of the nipple will cause this prolactin to be produced. And this patient will produce will make it discharge. I talk about excessive breast massage, uh, sexual intercourse. The other thing that will increase prolactin is stress. Stress. Anxiety, worry, uh, um, economic situation of the country, uh, fuel subsidy, anything that will cause stress will also increase prolactin. So those then thirdly, people too who take some medication, there are some medications, uh, especially some anti hypertensive drugs. Mm. This anti hypertensive drug like adamant. Um, so, uh, what we call the disappearing drugs, they also increase this production of prolactin. Then, anti ulcer drugs like the cyanotic and omeprazole, too, also increases uh, production of prolactin. And when you now have prolactin being produced, then you now have what we call the meat breaking out, uh, making the starch that is now associated with pregnancy. The second, we now look at the pathological aspect of it. Now, one of the pathological things that we see in patients that has uh, hyperprolactinomia is we look at the thyroid function test. When the thyroid hormone is low, when the sufficient has what we call some hypothyroidism, features of hypothyroidism, oh, slowness, weakness, and cold. When the thyroid hormone is low, the so one we see is that the patient that has thyroid hormone. So, what we normally see is that um, when we low thyroid hormone, now, the, in order for the body to produce more thyroid hormone, so the hormones that causes the TSH that causes the release of, of thyroid hormone also act on the pituitary gland to produce more prolactin. So when prolactin are released more, they tend to have high, meat, uh, they tend to have uh, galactoria. So hypothyroidism is a low cause of hyperprolactinemia that will now, patient will now present with. Galactoria. Another thing that also causes hyperlactin that we also see is that some people can essentially have a tumor in the brain, which are usually called pituitary tumors. Okay, some of them, uh, the most of them are benign. We call them micro adenoma of the brain. So they tend to have a pituitary tumor. When there's a pituitary tumor, they uh, tend to have production of high level of prolactin. And some of these prolactin, when these prolactin are produced, they tend to have uh, a galactoria. Some people can also call it paraneoplastic tumor, even when tumors are on another part of the body. But these tumors are producing prolactin, like the address of the adrenal tumors. And this will cause a secretion of, um, of prolactin that will, cause, that will increase uh, production of uh, milk. And the patient will now tend to have galactoria. People that also have liver diseases, like liver cirrhosis, um, and liver conditions, that prolactin are not really broken down 
in the liver. So then these patients will also have higher level of prolactin and they tend to have um, galactoria. The people that also have kidney disease, who that has one called chronic kidney disease, like uh, CKD, when there's the deficiency in uh, or diminished excretion of uh, lactin from the body, this patient also will present with hyperprolactinemia that will lead to galactoria. As well as so many things. But then, well, the one that we normally see more is hypothyroid disease and pituitary tumors. More of CK, only kidney disease, we don't see this. Yes. All right. Thank you very much, doctor. So, um, how about for men then? What's what makes them, you know, come down with galactoria to have milk discharge? Most of the time, we see the same principles: hypothyroidism, excessive breast stimulation, breast sucking. Those of them that are also on anti-hypertensive drug, a latiosal drug, they can also present with uh, galactoria. But most of the time, it's female that we see. So, okay. attention are mainly to the women. <laughs> And we're also talking to the women, the women range. <laughs> All right, Dr. Sozoa, thank you very much. This is 21 minutes yes. after 10, right here on Women Radio. And of course, this is the program with your doctor. And today we are looking at Galactera. So if you're wondering why you have breast discharge, you're not pregnant, you have breast discharge just like that. Okay, so you should get yourself checked out. You might just be, uh, you might just have galacteria. All right. So, um, in order not to scare you, Doctor Zuzua will go on to tell us, um, you know, about the treatment option of this and um, if it if it could be prevented. Okay, because I know some people now. Wait, so does it even come with pain? Does it come with what are the signs and symptoms? First of all, let's even look at that. Um, okay, okay let me look at this. One. Yes. As I said, that there are a symptom mm. that the patient with galactoria presents is making discharge from the breast. Okay. Okay. Now, now what are the things, that, other things that mm. depending for a patient that has low thyroid or more hypothyroidism, there will be features of hypothyroidism. That is, patient can have um, diminished metabolism. I eat, we not be able to do things fast. Patient will be drowsy. Patient mm. will be weak. Okay. So you address that one. Secondly, for people that have hyperprolactinemia, if it's as a result of tumor in the uh, mass in the brain, okay, which is called pituitary tumor, mm. the patient may have other features like one well, because the mass normally press on the brain, yeah, or called the op- optic chiasma. So the patient can have what we call blurring of vision. That is, we call it uh, by temperament and not there. That is to say that instead of seeing image in full, or they will not be seeing the image being blurred. So that's why the money has the put out and then they have a uh, blurring of vitreous. Thirdly, some of them that has um, um, uh, um, um, what's it called, that have thyroid issues, they can be neck swelling. So they tend to have blurring of vision, and sometimes because the pituitary gland is also occupying space in the brain, so the patient can also present with features of, um, of uh, what we call um, uh, what's it called? Space of eye lesion. Hmm. So they can have persistent headache. Hmm. Okay? They can have persistent headache because of the tumor that is in the brain. So, when they can have persistent headache. So, when these feature, features are done together for a woman that has calanthidia, we now begin to address it. What are the likely things that this patient that may be triggering this galactoria? Because I have said that galactoria is a symptom, hmm. it's not a disease. Okay. What to find out? What is causing, what is causing the making discharge? Hmm. And I've highlighted, uh, I've highlighted some, highlighted some of the likely um, causes. So stress, worry, anxiety, take that one off. Hmm. Then if you see persist, you look at the medication the patient is taking. Then you now patient will not tell you that oh, there are some other features, symptoms that will be associated with it, like a headache, blurry of vision. A galactoria. They can also ask whether they are still seeing the appeal regularly. Hmm. For people that have galactoria, because there's some degree of prolactin also affects production of of, of eggs because it inhibits the pathway that produces uh, the hormone that causes molecular growth and development. So when you now have that, what you are now going to be having that the patient will have irregular periods. Sometimes the period can be absent. And sometimes, when the period is not regular, the period is absent, and for a couple that is married, all will now follow is inability to see. So the, the time, this patient can present with infertility. Yeah. And the primary cause will just be 
that there is a, a there's hyper prolactin in them that anybody has not ever to. Hmm. Okay. This is really interesting. Thank you very much, Dr. Osos, as well, for giving us all of that information. Because sometimes we see things and we just take it for granted. Uh, just because maybe we're not feeling pains or we're not going through any sort of pains, we just take it for granted. But I think this is, um, you know, definitely coming in at a very good time. And um, it so definitely uh, alert us, you know, both for men and women. All right. So this is Women Radio WFM 91.7, 25 minutes after 10. Do what to call in with the number 07000 917 Send us a text or a WhatsApp message to 070 317-565-37. Today is on women's health and of course um, it is supported by Act Foundation on Women Radio. All right, so um, let's get on to hear from you, Dr. Sozua. Now, some of um, you know the treatment options available. Now, you said that Galactura is a symptom of you know uh, uh, of of um, you know something much more you know that could be going on in a woman's body. Now, is it possible that Galactura itself has its own treatment, or you have to look for the root cause of that Galactura that could come from you know different um, issues in the body? Uh, are we going to treat the root cause of it or we can actually just treat the galacteria and try to manage um, whatever is going on in a woman's body? Okay, yes, thank you very much for that. Um, as I said, that most of the patients that have galacteria too, sometimes they can also conceive irrespective of how well it is. Um, now, most of the time, when the patient now presents to you, mm. you now have to investigate and find out what is happening to the patient. And investigation and things, you take a very good decision, finding out the symptoms when they started, then you examine the patient. Examining the patient will pay attention to those areas that we like we know that are likely going to be affected. Oh, we check drugs, we check their visual acuity, whether there's um, issues with better vision, we check their neck, if there's any features of um, thyroid swelling or mass there. Yeah? Also look for features of uh, chronic renal failure if it's there. We look for stigmata of liver disease if it's there. Um, then we have also asked about the medication the patient has been on before to be sure that it's not the drug that is causing the calatoria. We also asked about her life the last six months, whether she has had a very stressful uh, condition. So when we establish that, so the next thing is to now try to investigate this patient. And I said that the cause of the of Galactoria is, as it is mainly um, the, the, the high level of prolactin. So first thing we'll do what we call the serum prolactin for them to be sure whether the prolactin is elevated or not. So if prolactin is elevated, that implies that, oh, there's high level of prolactin. Now, we don't just take it like that. So we look at the level of prolactin, whether it's extremely high or whether it's not too high. So sometimes when we look at it, that is greater than 100 um, IU or milligram. I you like that. When you get that 100, we are a bit worried whether there is, oh, maybe there is a mass in the brain or there is no mass. Whether they, when you get that 100, we are thinking that, oh, there will probably be a swelling or in the brain. Okay? Mm -hmm. So from there, we will now go ahead and do our thyroid function test. What also be sure whether the woman doesn't have any form of hypo or hyperthyroidism. Because hypothyroidism, as I said earlier, is one of the causes, causes of um, low of a uh, high level of, of prolactin. So we'll now go ahead and do the prolactin level, do the thyroid function test. The next thing we are going to do is that if the prolactin level is extremely very high, we'll now say, oh, man, that prolactin is very high, then I'll check for the mass that's in the brain. So we'll now go ahead and do a CT scan hmm. or do an MRI of the brain to check if there are pituitary mass there. Especially when it becomes very symptomatic, there's very official that giving drugs, the things don't come in. So the patient will benefit from the CT scan of the of the brain or the MRI of the brain. Those days we used to do an extra, which will show some abnormality at the at the base of the brain. There are a lot of abnormality that things tend to show at the base of the brain. So when you have all those ones in your mind, so so when the prolactin is high, what we normally do is that we tend to say, oh, uh, we control by giving medication. There are a lot of medications in the market that we normally do to them. Okay? We we'll give them medications to bring down the prolactin. And when we we'll give them medication, the drug that we we'll normally get also far to shrink, but to help to shrink the size of the mass, especially when it's not too high, 
So where do you get those medications? There are lots of drugs in the market. There are lots of them that will normally give. Okay, um, when we give them, there's a tendency that, oh, the plateau level will reduce. When the plateau level reduces, then the, the appeal can return back, ethical will reduce, uh, the blood pressure will reduce, and the Nikki discuss from the press to stop. And those who are married, who want to conceive, concession can follow thereafter. But for some, that has no level of thyroid removal, so you also tend to give them some drugs to, um, to bring the thyroid removal up so that they will not be the, the thyroid stimulating removal that is producing, causing the brain to produce more prolactin is reduced. So, with that doing, you can also treat um, um, these patients, and most of them tend to come from so You can also treat these patients with, um, um, depending on the theology, mm. you can treat these patients with uh, um, some uh, drugs, anti um, thyroid or more drugs, like level tyrosine, like I just mentioned it. Okay? Then if you now go further, if the thing is not relenting, and there's an ovium mass that is in the brain, which is, you know, sometimes they are micro at the moment, when they become macro, MA, and this is that a big large, and it's not disturbing the patient. The patient is not affecting their sight and everything. The next option is surgical. And the neurosurgeons are very, well, at least I have a lot of things, they don't do so they very perfectly. They do it through the nose, and they do as spinal resection hmm. of microadenoma, and they do it and they tend to do it very well. And the period will resume normally, especially when the things start disturbing. You think I'm so slow they can cause even cause blindness? Wow. I've had the patients, I have a, a consultant who does, have gone for some few people that most of them were never seen again because of the pressure of the mass on the level of the brain. So, those are the basic things that we do. And when this patient finally gets pregnant, some of them, sometimes we look at them and we stop those drugs. They tend to carry their pregnancy to tell the family from obstruction. But their people will definitely reduce that, they come, they turn back and become regular. They easily ovulate them and they can get pregnant as soon as possible. So that is the basic thing we will do. And those people who are undergoing stress, who are worried, who are anxious, who are we tell them to try to reduce their level of anxiety and, um, and their level of anxiety and the, their periods um, tend to return. And those who also engage in sexual intercourse that is a bit aggressive, so it's not easy to remember to, to do those two, not to be too aggressive, also can send them to stop. Um, and those who are also wearing the same bra, also as well as wear some loose bra, so that they will not be having some constant uh, nipple stimulation and irritation that will provoke or trigger productive release and will cause uh, them to bring nick from their breast, which is referred to as galactoria. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Sazul, for that. This is Women Radio WFM 91.7, 27 minutes 11. Please do what to call in via the number 07000-917-917. Send us a text or a WhatsApp message to 07030-317-56537. Those are the numbers to get in touch with us this morning, 07000-917-917. Send us a text or a WhatsApp message to 07030-317-567. All right, we have a question here coming from WhatsApp. And um, this says, although we didn't get a name to this, but um, she says, please, after being treated of galactoria and a woman is pregnant, does she have any test to run before breastfeeding the baby? Or is there any risk of breastfeeding after being treated of high prolactin that resulted to galactoria? So that's a question, Dr. Sazua. Okay, thank you very much. Not for the patient get pregnant, we're happy. We mm -hmm. stopped stop all the drugs that she was taking. The, the drug that normally gives her collateral and stops. Mm -hmm. Then after delivery, that is another bug in it. Mm -hmm. No, we will not stop her from uh, she needs to that's that after breast after delivery. Mm -hmm. There's production of uh collateral naturally. There's oxytocin release. Those are the ones that are initiate and mm -hmm. cause uh, milk secretion and uh, production of milk from the breast. So so it doesn't really affect so they breastfeed and breastfeed. Okay. So and she's saying is there any risk of breastfeeding after being treated of high prolactin that resulted in galactoria? No, 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 no. Okay. No. So she's all good. No risk to breastfeed. Okay. All right, thank you very much. I hope that your question has been answered. Um, we didn't get a name to this, but thank you so much for your uh, message. Uh, so please do well to send in yours also. 
uh, through text or WhatsApp message on 0703175637. Send us, uh, you can do well to call in via the number 07000 917 Let's not forget that. So you can go on our social media pages and drop your questions too on WhatsApp, uh, sorry, I mean Facebook, um, Instagram, and of course uh, YouTube and X2 on WFM 91.7 we'll definitely get them and ask the doctor your questions all right um doctor Zozo, thank you so much for all you have said so far and um we sincerely are getting more information and good information from you all right so um let's go on to hear from you are there potential complications or health risk all right before that we have a call hello good morning Hello, good morning. You're connected. Oh, okay. We'll lost that call. You want to call us back on 07000 917 So my question is, um, Dr. Zozua, are there potential complications or health risk that could be associated with um, untreated galactoria or, you know, not presenting early enough for the doctors to actually check and see, okay, why are you having discharge or why are you having galactoria? Are there, you know, um, complications, potential complications or health risk that could come with this? Uh, yes. One of the complications that we see with patients who has galactoria is inability to conceive. Hmm. Infertility. They will not be able to conceive. And it's quite simple. If this patient is drugs, the platinum comes that they conceive. Rather than seeing the doctor, so they will end up going for one pillar, going for one Instagram page, going for one Facebook page, Asking friends who are not well informed in the aspect of in the issue of gynecological um, uh, fertility and um, um, conception process. So, at the end of the day, so of them end up coming a bit very late. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's why we normally counsel patients when you have um, symptoms, right, as any symptom are available. It's not easy, as well as easy to go to us. At least ask the relevant questions. Ask people who understand the processes rather than getting this. Some will end up. Managing and managing and managing, they are already 40. Fertility becomes an issue. So, infertility one of the one of the common um, complications as well. Very good. See, another thing that we say that for a woman that also has a pituitary mass on his brain, okay, they are going to be having consistent persistent. They say they have migraine, and when they have persistent, that's why anybody that has persistent headache will normally send people go to the city, but there can be mass in the brain, so they will have constant headache, and it can be very disturbing and troublesome. Then thirdly, they can because of the mass effect, it can also cause that mark appears on their what we call the optic chiasma. That is where the eye crosses over each other. Okay? We call the optic chiasma. So this patient can have problem with vision. Okay? And if not manage properly, it can lead to blindness. There are some people who almost got blind from the man pressing on the yeah. So they can have what we call um, 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 blindness uh, result, uh, resulting from pressure of the mass on their on their brain. And tell you, for there are some other people too who also have some comorbidity like CK, uh, chronic renal failure, and oh, they can also have issues with um, um, urinary output and, and other things that they have. So basically, for people that have calatoria that is not well taken care of, they can tend to have um, um, infertility, they tend to have a constant headache, and they tend to have uh, um, uh, pressure symptoms of the brain. And they can lead to blindness. They are also slow in their behavior because of the hypothyroid hypo thyroid disease that may be associated with it that is not well actually. So these are basically the things that we share present when we are talking about a patient that has hypolactin and has galactoria. All right, 0700-917-917 is the number to call. Send us a text or a WhatsApp message to 070-317-56537. All right, doctor, let's go to the area of prevention. Now, you mentioned some, um, you know, ways, or rather, let's say, prevention that we can control. Um, a tight bras, um, irritation, uh, you mentioned um, which one again, stress, you know, all of that. Now, these are things that we can actually work on and we can control. We can do all of these things to prevent galactoria. Now, how about, you know, um, things like having 
a mass in the brain you we can't actually control that so how do we get to prevent it for that uh, what do we do you know in our small human efforts to prevent um, galacteria or to prevent uh, illnesses that brings about galacteria uh, so sometimes you have those most, most stress anxiety hmm. worry excessive breast stimulation very firm very firm brand those are, those are the constant things that causes the trigger to so release more prolactin. You understand? Hmm. So when more prolactin, what normally happens is that the cells that are in the in the in the the adenoma, the the pituitary gland, or sometimes undergoes what we call enlargement, which is called hypertrophy. Okay, hmm. as a result of those stress and worry, because the stress prolactin is coming out because oh you are. The, the 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 stress level is very high, and in order for you to compensate with that, that is coming up. So, the brain says that uh, particular that we need to work harder. It's just like somebody goes to the gym to carry uh, what is it called muscle to carry um, uh, weight and co. Mm. So after some time, the muscle become thicker and bigger. It's just like so, there's so much work at the level of the particular now. Okay, that is triggered by those stress, anxiety, worry. Excessive breast massage only because of uh, sex and cold. So those ones will cause some degree of stress on the pituitary gland to compensate. So so the pituitary gland will gradually begin to increase in size. So that's why we tell you that oh, basic stress, just as stress will cause hypertension, so stress will also cause pulantine mm. and also cause increase in the level of, of the pituitary gland. This one pulantine. That one try oh people try to avoid stress, live your life peacefully. Don't involve in risk. There's anything that will provoke your heart. You're not a, a so that will provoke you that will become unnecessarily anxious. If you have a boyfriend, let me make sure that your boyfriend is okay and is doing well, that doesn't stress you. The, and the stress that you cannot have control, that is economic stress or general stress that you mm. cannot control. But they also try to learn how to manage it. But design a way to manage the stress of life because whether we like it or not, stress can directly or indirectly affect us. Yeah. So this is just a small aspect I'm talking about. Mm. So with stress, anxiety, uh, excessive breast, no matter how interesting the inter stress is, we have to also be very careful with the way they do the massage and cook that they do. Uh, so when you reduce those ones, there's a less stress that you know, oh, the pituitary gland will not undergo, or oh, will not grow the level that will not be releasing prolactin and keep on growing and growing and growing. So when you do that, I think you'll be fine. You'll be fine. And when you notice that, oh, there's prolactin, there is a calacturia in your breast, quickly call for investigation so that we can give you drugs. To bring that the prolactin down. When the prolactin comes down, finally, when the prolactin comes down, then the stress of the, the work of the pituitary gland is also reduced. So the work of the pituitary will not be left for the production of FSH and LH alone, you know, not uh, not uh, production of prolactin. So that is basically what we normally uh, encourage patients to do. Yeah. So so because the stress will definitely happen in epithalamus, yeah. that will trigger the production of prolactin. And this can cause further alignment of the people. Hmm. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Sozwa. Now, um, we have a question which is not related to Galacteria at all, but um, I think it's a gynecological question. Now, um, this person says, I've been married for over 10 years. My fallopian tube test says fallopian tubes not visible or not shown. Now, does it mean it is blocked or is not there? Please help. Um, I don't know. Okay. This this one came, took came without a name, but um, is that is it possible for fallopian tubes to just not be visible at all? Yeah, sometimes hmm. I think uh, the woman has stayed so long, ten years of marriage, you see, and uh, uh, sometimes people make decisions. Sometimes, when there is a primary pathology, hmm. I think uh, they define something that is wrong. So you look at a woman who has married for ten years, for instance. Now she did an HRG that showed all oh, the fallopian tubes are not visible. Mm. That probably implies that oh, the fallopian tubes are blocked. Mm. They are blocked, so that is why there's it's all same. But if it's visible, the fallopian tubes are open. And fallopian tubes are very key in issue of conception. Yeah. So when you have a blocked tube like that, before people used to floss, but it doesn't work. People used to operate on the tube, it doesn't work like that. Those doesn't work. So when this issue of assisted conception came on board. The last thing you can bypass the fallopian tube and you can get pregnant. Mm -hmm. So, for that kind of patient who has a tube that cannot be visualized, so there's a primary pathology that can be addressed. 
the only way to address that problem is to go beyond, beyond the two by, by doing what we call as IBM, in vitro okay. fertilization. We take the egg, we take the sperm, we fertilize, hmm. and put it directly into the womb, avoiding the tubes. Hmm. Okay. So um, it's just for, for her to say, is for, for, or rather for the test to say it's not visible, that means it's actually blocked. It's not like it's not there. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, doctor, for giving an answer. But if it's blocked, it's like it's not there. It's not there, Abby. Hmm. There's nothing uh, anybody can do. So. Hmm. Our counselor had to do an aspect of as early as possible. Okay. At least she had the resources. But they are cheaper. The cost of IVF is basically there now. So, hmm. as you can conceive, as you can be lucky, she will have twins. And that will be the end of her uh, stress and worry. Hmm. Thank you so much, Dr. Ozezua, for answering that. All right, Dr. Ozezua. So let's go to um, lifestyle factors because I know, you know, talking to you over time, I know that you're one person that is big on how we can take care of ourselves as women and also our lifestyle too is one thing that you always stress on, you know, when we bring up um, different issues to talk about on Radio Doctor, especially as regards to women's health. So, um... Are there lifestyle factors or habits that, you know, may contribute to the occurrence of galactoria and some of the lifestyle habits or factors that we can actually start um, imbibing to, um, you know, be a step away from galactoria? Yes. But there are. Go and mention them mm. like passively so yeah. I can mention them out in the yes. As I said, um, lifestyles, because we already do. Um, so people are too aggressive when it comes to intimacy and such like that. So one of the things that somebody needs to do first um, is to be a bit aggressive, less aggressive, okay? Minimal stimulation, you still enjoy your pleasure. But when you are aggressive, you are stimulating more progression of relaxation, and the patient can then have a lot of And people also attribute um, some uh, exercise to, exercise to some extent, apart from uh, um, the, the strengthening of the muscles and other things. Also, have a way of, of, of taking you away from stress and anxiety, taking you away from the, the stress of life, and at the same time, also strengthen you so that at least um, 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 the rate at which the pituitary glands work uh, uh, is reduced so that there will be less production of collateral and also indirectly help in correcting hypothyroidism. We're not talking about diet too, but I mentioned hypothyroidism too. Food that are low in iodine too, and give use of the glue of uh, of uh, uh, hypothyroidism. So we encourage patients to take. Uh, they can take more carrots that are very rich in iodine. Uh, vegetables like the common pumpkin leaves can also help. Um, two more of uh, um, cabbages. Cabbage. Uh, what's the name of the other one? The one. They have been found to be very rich in. Uh, are you doing so when you do that? So, the that will definitely correct hypothyroidism to some extent and reduce the um, the level of prolactin that is in the brain. And we'll talk, also talk about exercise too, and um, also by way to some extent too, can also make other hormones to be distorted and they cannot affect and that enhances the question of prolactin. Then, issue of stress and worry of life. Though we are stressed every day, but you will not let them get into you. Whether it's uh, so that when you do that, to some extent, you will have to learn. Then, but to be more candid, you don't need to wear a bra that are extremely very tight. And then, because that will definitely cause some even more irritation and stimulation uh, for this uh, uh, thing. And don't be too aggressive during the course of the tendency. And that also reduce the. Uh, and production of meat that will initiate collateral. Yes. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Sozua. So let's have your final words uh, on Galactoria and what okay. you want us to take home as, you know, um, a doctor, gynecologist now. What would you want us to know? What would you want us to take home uh, from this topic for of today? Okay. okay, let me say three sentences. Galactoria is a symptom, it's not a disease. Okay. Um, Galatoria can easily be treated if you present on time. Um, and when you notice any symptoms of making it start, please uh, try and see your doctor so that the doctor can establish whether it's actually Galatoria, whether it's lactation, or whether there is a mass in the breast 
that is producing their milk. So, when you notice all this, is present to the doctor on time so that they can shop. But if it's straightforward, Galactoria is not a difficult thing, they will give you your medications, Latin comes down. And if you want to get pregnant, you get pregnant as soon as possible. And lastly, try and avoid, um, um, try and live peacefully and avoid stress in life. Stress, and live a stress free life. What you cannot do at any level, in your workplace, in your church, in your activity, I tell people, don't, there's no need for you to put pressure on your head. That's why some people, the Bible says in, in Lamentation, says some people put yoke on their head because they live with time. It's not everything you can do. What you cannot do, live it so that you can live a peaceful and a prosperous life. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Sozoa. Thank you so much for being a part of Radio Doctor today and talking to us on Galactoria. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. Do enjoy the rest of the week. Thank you. So that's Radio Doctor for today. Thank you for your messages on WhatsApp. I'm hoping that um, the doctor has been able to give you the answers that you need and, of course, has been able to point you towards the right direction. So thank you for your messages on WhatsApp and for all of you who tuned in to listen to Radio Doctor. A very big thank you uh, for doing that today. Uh, Radio Doctor for today is uh, on women's health is supported by ACT Foundation. A very big thank you to the Radio Doctor so of uh, today, Dr. Edopolo Sazwai, consultant of obstetrician and gynecologist at St. Ice Family Hospital. All right, uh, Radio Doctor is on Women Radio. It's Nigeria's first free consultation specialized uh, radio health program, which comes to you Mondays through Fridays from 10 a.m. So tomorrow, join us at 10 for another episode of Radio Doctor, which is going to be on general health. All right, so um, thanks to the producer of the program, Aisha Sani, and the executive producer, Tom Okewale Shania. My name is Rose Yusuf So Do have a great and a healthy day ahead. Good morning. WFM 91.7.